Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey there, everybody. How are you? It's Bennett, and I'm here with the Ramble. We go from now until uh, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. So no matter where you are in the world, if it is 11, if it's 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, which would be any one of a number of different times around the world, then, uh, hey... Welcome to our fine little show, okay? All right? Okay? Good. Anyway, I just want to adjust my levels here. Um, how are you? Uh, there is no, uh, uh, there is no um, Marjorie tonight. Uh, the reason being, she didn't want to do the show. She said, I don't like those people anymore, and I don't want to have anything to do with them. So, um, maybe I could... I know what I could do. I could put something in that chair. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Uh, our, uh, yeah, here we go. We can do this. Here we go. Uh, there we go. So, uh, the Trumpy doll. Uh, there we go, the Trumpy doll. Every now and then we'll uh, look over at the Trumpy doll and say, uh, how are things going? And Trumpy doll will say absolutely nothing. But there, there is Trumpy doll. Um, gee, isn't that, isn't that cute? That's the, uh, the Donald Trump doll, bear doll, Trumpy the bear, okay? We, we, that bear cost about 50 bucks. Very expensive bear, okay? So the, the Trumpy bear is sitting in place of Marjorie tonight because Marjorie doesn't want to do the show. She's in the other room. She's watching TV even as we speak. She's not even watching this show. But uh, so uh, she isn't doing the show tonight. So yeah, the show must go on anyway. You know, I got to do I got to do a, a full show on radio this weekend, and I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I I'm not going to say fuck. That's for damn sure. Going to be on over 50 stations, 52, 53 stations around the country. Uh, some of them in towns you never heard of. Other other places. Let me go back to me. Uh, other places. Um, uh, yeah, but, you know, like Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, California, Philadelphia, Chicago, uh, and uh, we're on WLS in Chicago. If you want to hear it, uh, hear uh, me absolutely blow it, okay? Uh, all you have to do is go to um, uh, uh, WMAL.com. Uh, they carry it. And there's a button up at the top that says, like, listen live or something like that. And you just click on that, and you'll be able to hear the show. And you can even click it before the show starts because you'll get to hear their programming. But their programming is on that channel. WMAL.com is the best place to go for it. There are a lot of other places I could point you, but, you know, any number of radio stations that carry it. But we're on also in, uh, let's see, we're on in, well, Ronnie's going to be on the show. So she can hear us in Portland. And Will Durst is going to be on the show, and he can hear us in San Francisco on KKSF. Uh, and um, as I say, WLS Chicago, WMAL Philadelphia. I have a whole list of the stations here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, let me get, as long as I, I've got to talk for the next half hour, giving you a list of radio stations could be a real uh, uh, great idea here. Let me see here. Da, 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 da. Where's that list? Is it here? Is it even here? I don't know if it is. Wait a minute, let me see here. Oh, there we are. There's the list. Here they are. Here are all the stations. Um, th these are not all of them. Uh, like the Portland isn't on here and the San Francisco isn't on here, but the rest of them are. Uh, and here's all my, here's all my, my papers for this weekend so I know all the various things I need to know. Okay, let me see here. Um, I'm only going to name the well I'll name some of the smaller markets too Chicago WLS AM and FM 2 uh, 
Philadelphia uh, is, oh, WPHT. And in Washington, yes, in Washington, it's WMAL. That's what the station in Washington is, WMAL. Uh, we're also in Dallas, Fort Worth at uh, WBAP AM. Uh, let's see here, Prescott, Arizona. Uh, don't forget Winona, Barstow, San Bernardino. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, uh, Tampa, St. Pete. We're all going to be on down there on WWTK, St. Louis, KM KMOX, which I believe is the station. If I'm not, I may be wrong. Is that the station that uh, that uh, Ronald Reagan was on when he was a kid? Anyway, Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, uh, we're on in Jacksonville. We'll be on in Roanoke, Lynchburg, Albany, Schenectady, Troy up north here, uh, Spokane, Washington, Paducah, Cape Girard, Harrisburg. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Savannah, Georgia, Charleston, South Carolina, Tallahassee, uh, Yakima, Pasco, Richland, Kennewick. I guess that's the, they, they don't have anything to put on. So Youngstown. Uh, let's see here. Topeka, Kansas. Okay. Uh, I've been to Topeka. Spent a, used to go, go spend my Christmases in Topeka when I was with uh, uh, friends with uh, uh, New Tech. Uh, Palm Springs, uh, Anchorage, Sioux City, Wichita Falls, Elmira, Bend, Oregon, Twin Falls, and it says blank, blank, it says here, but there are some stations listed there, so I don't know what that is. But anyway, those are some of the stations we're going to be on. There may be one in your area. Uh, tune in and listen to me just absolutely blow it, okay? Um, it's going to be a miserable t three hours of radio. Uh, but I'm going to do my best and uh, hope that uh, 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 they aren't terribly disappointed. Uh, uh, Walter, who you heard here on the show, Walter Sterling, whose show it is, said to me, just be Alex Bennett. Go be your uh, irreverent self and just do what you do. And then he suggested I tell the story about my time at uh, Midnight Blue, but I don't want to do that. I'm, yeah, I don't want to bring that up. It's not that I'm embarrassed by it. I just don't want to talk about it. But I am going to talk about aging in the first hour. In the second hour, I'm probably going to talk a little bit about uh, how politics has just you know, gotten just so ugly. Uh, but I'm, we're not going to get very political on the show because his show isn't political. It's, it's, it's kind of like life, lifestyle stories, you know. And... Uh, uh, so, um, but I'm going to, I'll do me, you know, I'll do me for the most part and see, hope that it survives, you know. But anyway, so that's, that's on Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern, so figure, it's live everywhere, by the way. It's live everywhere. Uh, Alex, you should eat it, a handful of magic mushrooms about an hour and a half before you go on the air Sunday. The energy would be cheerful. Yeah, sure, sure, I'm going to do that. I, you know, I never have done drugs on the air. Uh, it, 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 I just don't, uh, I don't believe in it because I don't think I have a complete control of my instrument, as it were. Uh, and that's the reason why I don't do drugs before uh, a show. A lot of people I knew used to go out and get high. I got high once. Uh, this was in Minneapolis before I went on the air. Just, just I'd smoked a joint. I just these were in the days when I was first uh, discovering drugs and everything like that. And I figured, ah, what? It, it couldn't hurt. I mean, I I'm, I'm very talkative under pot, and you know all the wonderful weird things I'll think and talk about. And so somebody called me up and said, uh, so what do you think? And I said, oh fuck, I don't care. And I went, what did I just say? <laughs> and from that time on, I never did a drug on the air. One time I was accidentally high, but the, it, I've never, ever been uh, on drugs when I do a show since that one event and one other, and I was with Jack Nicholson at the time, and uh, I was interviewing him, and I had taken these things called Dormadinas, which were like, uh, you remember, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Quaaludes. Well, Dormadinas in Spain were the Quaaludes of Spain. They were the same thing. They, you look on it, it says Metaqualone, uh, which was Metaqualudes. Uh, and uh, 
So I, um, I, I got these in, um, you could get them in any drugstore in Spain. You could go in and ask for 10 boxes of them, and there were like 10 of them to the box, and they were about a half a dose of Quaaludes. Well, before I ever went to Spain and, and, uh, and, and found that to be true, uh, I did, um, uh, I had a girlfriend. Uh, her name was Ginger J. Walker. Yes, her name was Ginger J. Walker. Okay, and I called her Ginger J. Walker. Uh, and uh, Ginger, uh, or Ginger, as they say in Spanish, uh, was in Spain. And she was the babysitter to, uh, who was the guy who wrote the phony book on Howard Hughes when he was living there? And he was the babysitter to the, his kids. Uh, and I got to know her here. And uh, we, we went out to dinner. I remember we went to a Chinese restaurant. And she said, hey, you want, uh, you want uh, two Dormadinas? And I said, what are they? She says, they're uh, Quaaludes from uh, Spain. I said, well, you know, I don't know. She says, they only last a couple hours. They don't stay in your system, you know. So if you take one now, and this was like 7 o'clock at night, you should be just fine by the time you go on the air. And I used to, in those days, go on the air at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I went on the air at 2 o'clock, and I, I went, took the two Dormadinas, and uh, I took one Dormadina, and, and then about an hour later, she says, how are you feeling? And I said, nothing. Nothing's happening. Not a, not a thing. And she said, well, uh, uh, would you like to try another one? I mean, it's only like 8 o'clock now, and you still don't have to go on the air till 2. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll take another one. I took another one. So an hour later... We're driving around. She says, got a buzz, huh? I said, no, nothing, just nothing. She says, well, it's 10 o'clock. If you took one now, it'd probably be all out by the time you go on the air at 2. You want another one? I said, sure. I dropped another one, okay? Now, it's getting to be a midnight, and uh, it's time for me to kind of leave her off uh, because I've got to go. Well, maybe she came with me to the studio. But I, uh, I didn't take any more because it would be too close to air time, and I didn't want to be high when I went on the air. So I, I, you know, I went on the air at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm still, the stuff never hit. It must have been, I don't know, maybe I had some coating in my stomach or something, but it didn't hit. And I'm, uh, so at 4 o'clock in the morning, I've got for an interview in the studio Jack Nicholson. And it was like the second time Jack had ever done my show. And uh, I uh, uh, was like, uh, you know, nothing was happening. And all of a sudden, while I'm interviewing him, these three Dormadinas decide to hit all at the same time. And I start you know, spacing out. And if you've ever had Quaaludes, you know exactly how you feel when you're high on Quaaludes. And I'm really stoned and high. And finally, we go to a commercial break, and I go to look at Jack, and I go, Jack, I am fucking stoned. And he goes, you look it, pal. <laughs> Somehow, I, I, I got through it. I mean, he, it, it, I, it, I couldn't do a very good interview because it, I had no sense of... of, of what could I call it? Uh, I had no, no, no ability at, at focusing in on the subject at hand. And uh, I, uh, uh, I got through the night, and that's my interview. With, and I don't have a copy of that interview, by the way, anywhere. I would love to have it. If anybody knows anybody who has that interview with Jack Nicholson from WPLJ, please get it to me because I want to hear what I was sounding like that night because... And it, as I say, it hit at like 4 o'clock, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, they all hit at the same time. But people would, would do these Dormadinas in Spain because you could buy them right over the counter. They weren't illegal in Spain. And they really weren't illegal here because customs didn't know what the fuck they were. I knew some woman who came in with her suitcase full of Dormadinas. These, they were little blue boxes with about 10 Dormadinas in, in a little slit. And uh, she brought back, I don't know, maybe a hundred of these things. And she goes through customs and they say, and what are these? And she says, oh, these are these over-the-counter sleeping pills you get from uh, 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 in Spain. She says, they're great. 
they just you go right to sleep and it's terrific. And they went, oh, okay, go right through, you know, because they didn't have Dormadinas on their list. Now, if they said Quaaludes on them, that would be a different story, but they didn't. And these were uh, these were like light, uh, half a dose of uh, of Quaaludes. And I learned how to speak Spanish by reading the instruction pamphlet in a box of, of Dormadinas. Uh, a little pamphlet came with it, and I was trying to read it to see what it was. It said metacualone, so I learned that that was the, the, the Spanish word for quaaludes. And I, I learned little words here and there reading the pamphlet that told the instruction pamphlet that told you how to, how to uh, do it. So I, I, I was really, you know. But anyway, that's my, you, you've, a lot of you have heard my Dormadina story, so I, I promise to never tell it again within, oh, a couple of weeks, okay? So. Hmm. Not a lot of people watching out there. I guess that story bored them. Fuck you. Uh, we have a death uh, today, and uh, being that we have a death, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to play this, Okay. Uh, and, and this is the real deal, folks. Hi, I'm Robin Leach with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams. And you're listening to the incredible, the memorable, the wonderful, the one and only Alex Bennett. Yes, that was Robin Leach, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he doesn't sound like that now. Hi, I'm Robin Leach with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams. And you're listening to the incredible, the memorable, the wonderful, the one and only Alex Bennett. Okay. And then it would say on Live 105, but I cut that off. Anyway, uh, uh, he, uh, he died today, Robin Leach. Who, who, who out there doesn't know who Robin Leach was, okay? Most of you, unless you're under a certain age. He had a great show on television. We watched it every week because it gave us a sense of what it would be like to be rich and famous and have all this fabulous wealth and be able to, you know, use it. And uh, so he did this show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And he did it, I think it was on in syndication for 11 seasons. And I think he just got tired of doing it. But he wound up being a millionaire and he moved to Vegas and he's been living in Vegas for years, writing for the Las Vegas newspaper. And uh, I remember the guy from when he was on the show and did that promo for me. Uh, I also remember him from a uh, few parties I went to uh, that Al Goldstein would hold at his place here in New York and and Robin would show up for that and you know I have nothing to say bad about the guy he was a really nice guy he was a terrific guy very cooperative very nice very easy to talk to he was a, a good person and uh, it's sad to see him die he died at 76 you know if he was tremendously overweight by the time he died, and he got a stroke back in November, and the stroke um, uh, rendered him, I guess, uh, uh, somewhat immobile, and uh, he eventually died like just the other day. So, uh, or yesterday, I think it was. Um, but I, I liked Robin, and uh, uh, he was a nice guy. I remember him as a nice guy, and it's sad to see him go, you know. Now, we got another guy who's going, uh, is going. You know what we're doing lately? We did it with Aretha, and now we're doing it with this guy. Uh, uh, Aretha wasn't dead, but, uh, but they said she was dying, and so therefore we started doing all these, you know, uh, tributes to her. And all the TV shows were like doing, uh, oh, Aretha's dying, and lo, oh, here, let's play respect, and uh, oh, here she is on uh, uh, Soul Train, and uh, blah, blah, blah. and they were they blew their wad a day before she died, and then the day she died, they doubled down on their wad, and and uh, you know, and so my feeling is, if you're going to praise the person. Wait till they die because, you know, you're going to give everybody a double dose of the same thing. Well, it turns out we got the sad news today. Let me let me read what uh, the John McCain family uh, released the following st statement today. Last summer, Senator John McCain shared with Americans the news our family already knew. He had been diagnosed with an aggressive uh, glioblastoma, glioblastoma, glioblastoma. And the prognosis was serious. 
In the years since, John has surpassed expectations for his survival, but the progress of the disease and the inexorable advance of age render their verdict. With his usual strength of will, he has now chosen to discontinue medical treatment. Our family is immensely grateful for the support and kindness of all his caregivers over the last year and for the continuing outpouring of concern and affection from John's many friends and associates and the many thousands of people who are keeping him in their prayers. I think it's millions, to be honest with you. God bless and thank you all. And so now they're on the air, uh, every hour on the hour, doing these tributes to John McCain, but he's not dead yet. So when he dies, they're going to have to double down on all the praise and all of that. Uh, he's not dead yet. And, and because he's not dead yet, I say, don't put him in the grave early, right? You know, he's, he's going there. He's going to be there. I would imagine in the next couple of days we'll get the news that John McCain is dead. We may get the news any moment because, you know, they may have waited to send this release out till they knew that, you know, the, the end was near. But this is a guy who's lived a great life, and uh, he is appreciative of it, and uh, a classy guy. Now, I never, I didn't agree with his politics a lot of the time, but I did agree with his bearing and his dignity and his ability to make what is an ugly business a little nicer. And he had some brave moments towards the end, and I just think that, you know, uh, I would have never voted for him for president. I had no intention of it. But, uh, and I think he kind of sold out when he ran for president by bringing in Sarah Palin and so on. But I liked him. I liked his, I liked his, uh, I, his, his sincerity, uh, his, uh, uh, his, his desire to, to find the truth in, in certain matters, and I just liked him. And uh, uh, when he goes, he will, it, he will be missed because he gave class to the, to the Senate, you know, and uh, something it could sorely use right now. Uh, and uh, his, one of his last speeches was a speech he gave to the uh, Senate uh, yelling and screaming at them about the way they were handling things, you know. And I just, I always, uh, I, I, I always had a certain appreciation for his dignity and his class and uh, all of that. I didn't agree with his politics a lot of the time. Did not agree with him. A lot of the time I did. But, mo you know, because he, he was one of the more liberal uh, Republicans in the, in the Senate. Uh, and so I did like him for that. But he still wasn't liberal enough for me to be really happy with him. Uh, so anyway, I, I am just, uh, you know, but I'm not going to do an over uh, overabundance of stuff here about him until he dies. You know, because they sit there and they just keep waiting. Is he going to die? Has he died yet? Are we gonna, can we talk about him dying? You know. Anyway, um, so I don't have Marjorie here. And I keep losing people listening to this. I guess I'm just boring tonight. Fuck you. I don't care. I'll go to bed early or something like that. You know? Um, and um, well, let me see here. Let me, I'm trying to clear out all of these things on the, on the thingy. There we go. Now we're gone. Okay, now let me turn on the, uh, let me turn on the Skype. So if anybody wants to call... There has been a, by the way, there has been a pissing match going on uh, uh, on my Facebook page uh, between Ray Renati and uh, Phil Meyer. So I hope they both call tonight uh, and they can, uh, uh, they can talk about it. In fact, almost everything here that they did, uh, the writing on it, but I'll show you later. Anyway, hey, first up, hey, we get Jason. You know, it's uh, uh, he. How's gets, it going? Every now and then he gets to call because his wife lets him. And let me just uh, here. Let me go. Uh, there she is. In fact, we can see her in the background. Wait a minute. I'm trying to. Oh, come on, panel. There we go. There we go. How you doing tonight, Jason? Pretty good yourself. I'm doing okay. You know. Went to my physical therapy today. What a waste of time that is. Was that the new one? No, that's the old one. 
But, it, uh, you know, it's a guy I trust, and he's good at what he chiropractor. does. Chiropractor. <clears throat> huh? No. Chiropractor. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, my doctor recommended that I not go to a chiropractor. He yeah, said but he, your physical therapist he, recommended that you did. No, well, he, he did, but I, you know, the fact was that my uh, doctor said that a chiropractor could really screw this thing up. You know, he could, he said they could do something decent. Conflict but they could also, of interest. Could, no, he said they could clear it. They could do something for it. Uh, uh, but the, um, uh, under normal conditions, uh, he wouldn't trust a chiropractor with this. That it might exacerbate. Hey, look, out in his garage with his cigar. Uh, you smoking a cigar has so much joie look, to do. I'm in my garage, too. Uh, 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 you well, are? Are you really? Yes. Yeah. I got booted to the garage because my son, his bedroom is right above my computer room, and he says I'm too loud. Oh, really? You're yeah. too loud. Who pays the rent? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Rent. Yeah. <laughs> the mortgage, whatever. Yeah. 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 I think you're entitled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got your New York Yankees cup. Yep. Yep. Going to Camden Yards tomorrow to see the Yankees play the Orioles. Oh, really? Going to be a gorgeous day. Yeah. My wife is still in the Philippines, so trying to fill up my time. Yeah. So, But the um, um, Camden Yards is supposed to be very nice. It is. It's a beautiful ballpark. It, it, uh, it, I like ballparks that are ballpark only ballparks, and I believe Camden Yards is only meant yes. for baseball. Yes. Yeah. All of them today are. Pretty much. Pretty much. All of the newer, yeah, there's no really, uh, that was a 70s thing. All of those round, you know, ballparks that could be used for anything. Yeah. You know, that that's that's gone. Yeah, well, uh, also, uh, I mean, what they do is, there's so, it, baseball is a pretty long season. So they get the use of the place. And then uh, during the winter, they can do concerts and stuff in there, you know. Yeah, uh, they, they do that. At Yankee Stadium, they actually play soccer there uh, they have to really they, they what is it the new york city uh soccer football whatever it is football club nycfc that nobody knows about plays at yankee stadium oh, during really? the baseball season in fact during the baseball season yeah they think to, about doing that in detroit too yeah they have to arrange it when the yankees are out of town and then they have to reconfigure the entire field yeah and and it's, it doesn't work well. They would love to get out of there because it's a stadium not built for for anything but baseball. But uh, that's they you, you know kind of build a, a a a soccer thing right in the middle of it. I guess they do, but it 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 doesn't play well because you're not close to the action because they have to do it kind of in the outfield. Yeah. So you know they can't do that in you know the way a baseball diamond is built the way it hugs the field yeah all those all of those uh all of those seats that are behind from like first to third all the way around are far from the action wow so uh it's is still that way. wait a minute turn turn up your mic uh, kevin oh it's probably i probably got it set wrong <sighs> oakland is that way yeah yeah, turn. Can they, uh, you, can you they turn? still use a multiple stadium, and it's a that's an older game. ballpark. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it so almost cool. sounds like you're talking out of your computer, not your microphone. Uh, well, hit uh, on your computer. Hit where your microphone is on the computer. I'll bet he's. No, that that's yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. That's hot. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, that's hot. That's hot. Probably backwards. It's just, it's just it. Yeah, either that or. Uh, there. Is that better? Oh, no, yeah, much, yeah, much better. Much better. I did, it's directional, and I got it the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that is. Put it in the wrong hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Oakland is like that, and it, it sucks for, you know, for football, which I don't care about because the Raiders, but uh, they, they screw up the baseball field really bad, the yeah. Raiders do. But they put it back the way it's supposed to be once it, oh, there's a game. Yeah, there. it's all tore up like hell. You know, you see lines across the field and everything else. Yeah, yeah. You got this nice baseball field with football lines going across the middle of it. Well, you know, uh, ba ba uh, let's see here. The uh, um, in uh, we have uh, the uh, we have the the uh, forty nine. What is it? The baseball team, the Giants in San Francisco, and the Giants are. Uh, uh, are okay, you know. Um, 
Uh, yeah, their stadium is a lot like Kingdom Yards now. Y- yeah. Oh, it, it's a baseball. It's it, beautiful. I've been there. It's basically yeah. Pac, baseball. Pac Bell. Yeah, I've been there. It's a nice yeah. ballpark. Oh, yeah, with the bay right out in back of it. Yeah. See, yeah. I, yeah. Cove. Hi, hi. see, Oakland is talking about doing that on the other side. Yeah, well, I, o- I, Oakland, came, I came up with a great idea of what I wanted to do with, uh, with Pac Bell Park. Is I, I thought that they should have made it so that when the game is on, they could then disengage from landfall and float it out into the middle of the bay while they're there playing the game. Aren't they going to do that for the Warriors? Uh, yeah. That would <laughs> they be were going to have it on the pier. That would be interesting because you got to have running water and you have to have electric. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, and if there was ever water. an emergency, I, 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 if there I was ever an emergency, it'd be tough to get back to land. I didn't say it was going to hey, be. Just have a helipad. I didn't say it was going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I think that'd be uh, awesome. Boats floating around. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, our good friend from uh, from uh, Hawaii is calling us, and it looks sunny outside. No, it's not, Mr. Bennett, and the and the Gabnet Group. It's not. If I turn my back here. Yeah. It's raining heavy right now. Oh, oh really? It's supposed to get worse, isn't it, James? Hurricane, right? You, 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 yeah. I don't know if you see the water coming down off my roofies over here. Yeah. But you're on the right side of the island, right? Yeah, but we're getting whack right now. The 40 mile an hour gusts are blowing pretty darn hard. Renee is probably getting whacked on her side. Uh, so the, the gusts are heavy, 35 to 40 miles an hour. And the, the water is coming in almost horizontal. I'm cut off from going into town right now for two days. We've had, you know, uh, landslides and that kind of stuff. No, There's no post office delivery Thursday or Friday. The banks are closed. No garbage. Uh, so, you know, you hunker down eating, you know, canned tuna, canned sardines, all that good stuff. <laughs> what's the, what's the rainfall? Well, you guys like spam. Uh, That's good. Spam. We've had a, in, in the past 24 hours, I think we had something like, what, almost 20 inches of rain. Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. It's you know, in some areas, it's coming down almost an inch an hour. And all you're getting is a Category Two, believe it or not. But, but yeah, but we're getting we're way on the edge. But uh, we're on that upper right quadrant, the upper right quadrant of the rotating hurricane. We get whacked all the time. Really? Wow. We pick up the the blast from the, the the rain and the shear, the wind shear, and, and also the westerlies that blow in the trade winds. Yeah. Blow in uh, from the west side. You know, they come in on the northwest side. So we're getting kind of whack. It's a Bayfront, if you're familiar with Helix, it's like a, a playland at the beach. It's all flooded. <laughs> I think they said that the trade winds was going to push the storm away from the islands. Yeah, well, it didn't quite do it. Oh. And, you know, the storm is only moving about six miles an hour. That's another yeah. problem. It's moving they too damn slow. Small. Yes, yeah, very slow. Yeah. So you it sits know, there and right dumps. Now it's almost headed to Honolulu. So, uh they're going to get whacked in a, probably later tonight, starting with heavy rain. Maui mm. has got some problems. I guess you know, Mr. Meyer, there are about 4,000 people that are out of power over there right now. Wow. And, of course, the airport is shut down. Kahului is shut down. There's no incoming flights from the mainland or even from Japan. Well, Kahului is Maui, yeah. And, of course, the uh, Young Brothers, the barges have stopped sailing from Honolulu, so there's no supplies coming into the outer islands. The next yeah. shipment will probably go out maybe if the weather, you know, Monday if we're if we're lucky. Wow. wow. So also Honolulu, you know, all major ships have put to sea. The Navy fleet has gone to sea. Uh, the yeah, the you, subs, you were saying the that you were subs say- are gone. Yeah. Uh, the hospital ship is gone. Uh, you know, everybody's hunkering down. Hey, actually, you know, Mr. Bennett, the bars are pretty well filled. I got to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah, they they got to float away, man. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, uh, oh, but keep yourself safe. You know, uh, it. Uh, James, I assume you have electricity, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, you could power, be on the phone. But it, it's, it's been on and off during yeah. this day. We've lost it several times. We're about five, ten minutes, an hour this morning. Uh, you know, Helco's. You know, they they prepositioned all the trucks, the the power company, because you know we don't have hydroelectric power out here. Everything is burned on uh, diesel fuel. You know, yeah. 1970 technology. You know, they only have enough fuel for 90 days. That's it. Then they got to get another tanker ship that's coming in. Wow, it must wow. be Trump's favorite state. It must be. It must Everything. Be <laughs> it is. You hey, know, no, hey, we, we we burn clean oil. We don't burn the dirty coal. Come on, man. <laughs> do you do you reset your clocks 
each time the utilities go off, or are you just given up? Say again? Have you been resetting your clocks each time uh, the utilities go off? No, I don't. I, I, I got to give it up. You know, I don't worry about stuff like that. I got yeah. other. I got more major problems. You know, I got to make sure the roof doesn't leak here. Uh, the, the foliage that's behind me doesn't get ripped down. Uh, you should see some kind of a downspout behind me that's really throwing out water. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. You said that that was going into a 10,000-gallon uh, holding bin. Yeah, the, the holding tank is behind me, uh, below it. That's okay. I have uh, two uh, overflow, uh, you know, like a toilet overflow, you know, floaters, you know, which, uh, and a sump pump, which take out the excess water. Yeah. yeah. Hey, anyway, I, I better get out of here. You guys have a discussion going in. I don't want to lose power and cut things out. So anyway, uh, we're, we're surviving out here in country Hilo, you know. Uh, you know, we're sort of hurricane weary, but, you know, like I said, we got enough canned beer to cover us, okay? Well, you got a hurricane, you got a volcano. <clears throat> what else could go wrong? Exactly. We got plenty of vodka. We got good vodka out here. I got to tell you, yeah. man. <laughs> we're the locusts. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah, excuse of vodka, or an even warm 7-Up covers your, your, your pain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Keep safe. Okay, so gentlemen, aloha. We'll aloha. be seeing you. Aloha. Take care. Stay aloha. safe. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's uh, James. He's, he calls us from Hawaii, and they're in the midst of uh, uh, yet another cataclysm. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jason, you have your hand up. I was just going to say, the way he was describing the storm, you know, I work for the phone company, and I've worked in worse than that. <laughs> Well, it's actually still out there climbing telephone poles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not like it's terrible. Oh, 40 mile an hour winds. Come on. That's not too bad. Yeah, it, it's it's a category, too. But what's amazing is a, a, a hurricane in that part of the world. Yeah, they know. usually miss. No, they usually don't happen. Yeah, well, they they miss the islands. Here's the climate change. Climate change. Here's the real. climate change. You know, and 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 to and to Donald Trump who's helping with it. And to Donald Trump, right? Yeah, yeah and who's trying to get rid of all of the the, the national. Hey, will parks he treat them like Puerto Rico if it happens bad? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I yeah, think yeah right. People voted for him. I don't think Hawaii got uh, that he won that state. So I don't think they're going to get any help. Yeah. Well, you know something. <laughs> fuck him. Just fuck <laughs> him. That's really that's but that's proud. That's that's a proud moment in our history, right? So state didn't support him, so fuck the state, right? That's Just the like way an American president should behave. But they're going to get a free McCain cam so they can watch uh, McCain as he uh, descends <laughs> as into he the dies. Night. Oh, that's, that's yeah. That, yeah, that's hilarious, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a McCain cam? Everybody's got a McCain cam. Bad yeah. timing. Uh, don't don't yeah. don't double down on it, Phil. Don't All double right. down on it. Okay. That's what Trump does. Yeah. yeah, that's what Trump does, and that's why you do it. Uh, yeah. No, but uh, um, uh, uh, where was I? I don't know. I don't care. Uh, you were talking about Hawaii that... Uh, yeah, it's just that we, we, we have, you know, they usually don't get hurricanes. It's just yeah. not, that that's not the part of the world for hurricanes. But you can get, you know, you can get them anywhere, depending on the weather conditions and depending on global warming. Yes, Jason. Got to ask Rob a question. So I've had probably about 10 cigars in the humidor for probably at least a good five years, and the humidity is probably about 70%. You think they're still good or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say. Well, wait a minute. He didn't they... ask you, Phil. He asked Rob. <laughs> I, I yeah. would bet, no, though. That... I'm sorry. I forgot. Phil is a smoker, too. So I would think, though, that after five years, that, you know, that after a while, I mean, they have to be really rare cigars. Otherwise, they... They don't really hold up as well. They don't age like you would think they would. I was just almost debating. You smoke them though. I smoke one. So yeah, go, go ahead, join me. As long as yeah, they're, in, as long as they're, I'll be in, right back. As long as they're in a humidor, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, there's you don't want to smoke fresh cigars. Like yeah. you know, you don't want to smoke a cigar that was just rolled. It has to age somewhat. Yeah. But it gets to a certain point after a while where it's not going to. It's it, in order for to age it. It has to be. Uh, you have to really know what you're doing, otherwise they just sort of lose their flavor. Explain Not to that me. They, it, it, I'm at 62 uh, percent. And that's the, a little low. Uh, yeah, I can't get it up much more. I've had. Uh, I've got this uh, thing that I soak with the uh, uh, solution, some sort of glycol thing. I have another one in here which I fill with the glycol thing. 
Yeah. And uh, I can't get it just, past 60, 62. Well, first of all, you don't even really know that 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 uh, that device is is it calibrated. Did you calibrate it? Uh, it's digital. That doesn't matter. It has to be calibrated. Yeah. Uh, so you don't really know what it is until you calibrate it. Uh, what, the way you calibrate it is you take. Uh, Oh crap! I think it's table saw. There, if you Google it, it'll tell you how to calibrate it. You take a capful of, I think it's salt. I don't remember. It's been a long time. And you put some water in it, and then you take that, um, uh, and you and you take the hum the, the 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 meter there, and you put it inside like a plastic baggie, and you okay. let it sit, and it should get to there. There's an exact percentage that you should get to and if it doesn't, it, it it's going to get there because the 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 material will bring it there. If you're device doesn't show that you calibrate it up or down to get it there then you know it's calibrated okay. but even still if you can't get it past 62 then you might have weak seals and that i don't know how good that humidor is but it might have weak it, seals i prepared it but it might not and i put a i i actually put a little bit of a weight on it uh you know it wasn't a bad one yeah yeah no? Yeah, that, you know, the, you have to get a pretty decent humidor. Well, hi, Jeff, Does it really, I, I really didn't, seal? I didn't even notice. I, we've been I didn't even notice. We've been, tracks. I didn't yeah. even notice we've been joined by Jeff. Hi, Jeff. You're just so quiet. Yeah. You sneak right in there. Yeah, your mic isn't on. Uh, yeah. Bing. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Bing. <laughs> Yeah. No cigars for me. Yeah, today. yeah. I, I never could. I never could understand cigar smoking. I never could understand smoking. I don't understand did. cigarette smoking. Yeah, but I like the taste of a cigar, especially when you pair. One of my favorite things to pair cigars with. A lot of people like alcohol. I like good coffee. Yeah, yeah. Now you see this. Really nice. uh, wait a minute. This, this is Phil, supposed Phil, to keep it Phil, at seventy. This is not interesting for a general audience. Really? Well, if they really? smoke cigars, I mean, is. you just keep it it's good. Nice, you brought it up. You showed us your humidor. Now, drop it. <laughs> you know, Google it, Phil. You'll find everything you need to know. You know. All right, thanks. I mean, uh, I'm sure there about how many people out there do you think are really interested in whether your humidor is working or not? Thousands. Yeah. <laughs> but you it. can't smoke cigars anymore, can you? With your well, you know, occasionally, uh, you know, I probably smoke about four or five a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know. What, with his what, with the heart problem? I, I don't think I that... Just in general, I don't know, you get to a certain yeah, it's, point, it's, you it's start not a good issues. idea. Yeah, it's well, not a you good know, idea. You know, you know what, uh, the, the, the cancer that people think that when they smoke cigars, there's no cancer associated with cigars. But there is, because oh. the, the cigar goes through your mucous membrane. And it's basically, I think it's liver cancer that is exacerbated. It's, it's the it's the, it's the small vessels that uh, you destroy. I think with with the smoking, uh, isn't that right, Jeff? You know, there there is these really small blood vessels. That's that, cigarette smoking, and those are in your lungs, right? No, they're everywhere. Uh, they're well, what, your whole circulatory system. What I heard system. is your liver can be affected by by cigars. Uh, yeah, because. You're, you're, it, it, people, they don't think, because you don't inhale, you don't think you're getting anything. But the thing is, it, uh, it, it if you smoke cigars heavily, and I don't think Rob mm. smokes them heavily. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Week. Yeah, that's not going to kill you. La Flor. La, uh, yeah, La Gloria. Up a little bit. Is that a Cuban? La Gloria cu Cubana. Yeah. Mm. Are those, Probably a fake Cuban. Are, are Cuban cigars that good? No, just because it says no. Cubana doesn't mean it's Cuban. Are, are Cuban cigars? It's a Cuban that, seed. Yeah. Are, yeah. Are Cuban, Cuban cigars? Can I tend ask? To eat? I'm just. Oh, geez. Go ahead. I got. I got a whole go box ahead, of them. Phil, go ahead. Cuban cigars tend to be rolled too tightly for me, and they're very hard to draw on. You find that, uh, uh, Rob? <laughs> I've actually don't know that I've ever smoked a Cuban. And this thing is so dry that I don't think it's going to be a matter if it's <laughs> too tight. <laughs> You might just you light it, it my up humidor. And, and the whole thing will go <laughs> like that. Yeah. Do you have those in a humidor? Oh, okay. That's right. He said he did. Yeah. Let's see. What are you using in the humidor to keep the thing? He's got his thing at 70. I I, I, I use understand. Hartfeld beads. Yeah. Heart? Hartfeld. Hartfeld okay. beads. Google I'll them. check that out. They're really accurate. They also take humidity out of the humidifier if it gets too humid. 
Wow. Can I do the same thing with my marijuana? Yes, I would I, Yeah, I bet, I bet you could. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, See, the cigar industry has a place to go now. They can go to the marijuana industry and say, hey, yeah. we'll sell you all these same kinds of uh, devices. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, he has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, somebody was telling me tonight that they take hot oil and they kind of smear it on their skin. You guys know about that? Yeah, no. CBD, uh, CBD. Yeah, uh, 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 Albert was telling us about it because he lives in Florida now where you can go to dispensaries and get stuff, and he says he's been getting the pot oil. and that I've it, been doing that for uh, my my legs. And and does it uh, help? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking you, does it help, not does it make you feel good? No, uh, it doesn't have any THC in it. Oh, oh that's no fun. Damn it. Well, what good is it? Yeah, I know. I got to go to other stuff for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm i just wondering if maybe if I'd started doing a little more pot, it would help my feet. You know. Why don't no. you uh, try that uh, cannabis oil? Uh, you know, maybe that'll help. Because I can't get it, Phil. Oh, go Why? to Canada. I'm... You can get it. Oh, you can't get it in New I York. I thought New York was a medicinal state. It's a medicinal state, but have you seen the regulations? No. You know, no. Uh, it, 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 you can smoke pot if you're dying. <laughs> you know, if you've got cancer, oh, yeah, you can get it. You know, uh, it's it's not easy. But no. I think CBD, you can order online and get it in the mail and all that crap. Yeah, it doesn't get you high, so. Michigan just started regulating CBD oil the same as medical marijuana. Yeah, I just don't. You know, I'm wondering why these states go through this whole thing about medicinal this, medicinal that. Do what Canada did. Just make it fucking legal. Because yeah. that was the only way that they can get people to vote on it to pass it. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, what they do is they believe an old myth about what marijuana yeah. is and about, you know, because in order to make it illegal, a guy by the name of Harry J. Anslinger, who was in the federal government, uh, went to the press and had them print all these fake stories about marijuana usage and people jumping out of buildings and so on. This is about 19... If you look at the, at the newspapers in 1933, there wasn't a single article on marijuana. By 1934, there was an article almost every day about marijuana. And With by its roots in hell. And, yeah, and by, <laughs> by, by, by 1935, uh, they, they, he, they got it made illegal, which gave Harry J. Anslinger a job for the next 25 years. Did you make any money off that movie? Uh, uh, the no, uh, I did. What did you just mention? There was no money. For madness. There was no money to be made off of it. We did it to give money to uh, 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 what do you call it? Normal. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, but but uh, you you were able to garner that film or get the rights. No, to it I was or part of a group of people who we took that film and we uh, put it out to the public. And I thank you for that. Because you know. that's how I spent my late teens but basically, on Saturday night, yeah. going to the midnight yeah. showing of <laughs> Reaper Reaper Madness. Reaper Madness. And well, stoned a actually, in the theater. <laughs> actually, the whole thing was started by Normal. Uh, they found the film, and then they put it in theaters. And we were just all part of a group that kind of worked on publicity and getting it out there, and you know. Uh, but yeah, but, but all I'm saying that is that by 1930, by yeah. 1935, they had made it illegal. And on his deathbed, somebody said to Harry J. Anslinger, did you ever really think that marijuana was dangerous? He said, no, I just wanted to get a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so we, and fake news was invented way before Donald Trump. Oh, oh, go back to Hearst, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and then, that, then again, too, they are also using the Mexicans to, you know, get their way because marijuana... With our reefer madness, it's the Mexicans and the blacks that are doing it. We make it illegal. What am yeah. I hearing? Am I hearing a cricket? That's your audience. Sorry. That, that's me. I'm in my garage and there's a cricket in here. Oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> supposedly, I thought it was we, here. Supposedly, we can tell what the temperature is by how many chirps they do chirps, per second. Yeah, or a minute or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, but. Uh, yeah, good you, luck. You know, I mean, marijuana, it, it was it was amazing what they did with that, you know. Uh, 
And, and so uh, to this day, people feel, oh, we've got to go through all these hoops and everything to make it legal. I mean, what's the big deal? It's not fucking dangerous. And it grows naturally out of the ground. So do poison mushrooms. <laughs> Jesus, Phil. Well, those are poison. Those are poison. That's why they call <laughs> the, the them poison. The biggest thing right now, too, though, with making it legal is not that, you know, we've made it illegal. It's it's a national or international treaty with other countries. And that's where they need to be able to back out of the well, treaty. Oh, 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 well, to, you know, you know, you know where that treaty came from? A little guy by the name of Harry J. Anslinger <laughs> who went to the U.N. and had them pass a resolution that no country would legalize marijuana. Now, some countries like Spain have marijuana uh, available, and you can use marijuana, but they never legalized it. They decriminalized it. How about the Netherlands? It. Will you let me finish, Phil? All right, fuck. Jeez. God, every time I'm saying something, you interrupt. Go ahead. What were you going to say that was so important, Phil? Go ahead. Because I forgot what I was going to say. He took out his earbuds. Huh? He took out his earbuds. And now he's he went gone. into a hissy fit and hung up. So He's a goner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, come on, Phil. Hey, he has a heart condition. Huh? Be easy on him. He has a heart condition. Be easy on him. Yeah. Maybe he can't take it. Let me see here. Uh, is he still on or not? I have no idea whether he's still. I yeah, think he's still on because if he on, wasn't. He, he's still on. He just turned off his just picture. Just turned his picture. Just turned off his picture. Now I can't remember what I was going to say. It had to do with the Harry J. Anslinger and the, oh, the U.N., yeah, the countries like Spain suddenly decided to make it, uh, 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 to decriminalize it in order to get around that treaty they had signed years ago. And so that's what countries do. And decriminalization is what I believe in anyway, because I don't like legalization. That means that big companies come in and they, you know, distribute the marijuana. See, I don't know. I, I do believe in legalization. I believe it should be regulated. I should believe that why? potencies what about, what, should be regulated. But what about it needs to be regulated? Because well, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to sit there and make it into crack. Yeah, and you, you wait, regulate wait, 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 alcohol. Wait, 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 you don't want to yeah, sit there and, and make regulate it. taxes that is, on wait, it so wait, it can wait, go to... Hold, hold on a second, Jason. Uh, marijuana isn't crack. Uh, the way that it's become, you know, right now, today's marijuana is a hell of a lot stronger than it was. Even yeah. in my time, when I was a kid, man, I could smoke down on a joint, you know, be passing around four or five, six times with my buddies. Yeah. Now, now one hit, done. Yeah, yeah. one and done. You know, it, it's very strong. It, and I don't believe in edibles. I don't believe that edibles should be legal. You know, because those are so easy for a kid to get a hold of. And maybe possibly there have been no recorded deaths. Uh, because of marijuana, but if you have edibles and a kid gets a hold of it, maybe there might start to be. Well, because they, yeah. they make it into candy. It's designed for a kid's going to want to eat you know, it. You know, I, I don't, that's not right. I refuse. I refuse to believe in taking the rights away from adults because of something might hurt kids. It's the responsibility of the parents to make sure their kids are safe. Hey, do you believe in gun rights? Huh? No. You believe in gun regulation? No, not at all. You don't believe in gun regulation? No. Oh, yeah, yeah you do. Well, I believe in I believe in absolute gun regulation, no guns at all. Oh, I hate that. That you know why? Because it hurts people. Hmm? If you have you know a drug out there that people are sitting there genetically altering that could possibly hurt people, I believe you should regulate it. Well, uh, I you know marijuana is not what I would call something that I would regulate. Okay, it's just not that dangerous. I agree with you. The kind of weed they're growing today is far stronger than the weed they used to grow. Um, and, and you had your own experience with the edibles, too. Well, that you I had, had my own dosage. experience with edibles, although the recent edibles that I've seen have a little warning on them saying, only take a little bit and see how it affects <laughs> you, and then measure your dose based on that. And it says it right that on the package. And that kid that gets into it, he's going to read that, too, and be like, oh, I should only take well, a little bit. you know. I, 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 I refuse to sanitize my world for parents who don't do their job. Well, if you're going to go by that theory, Jason, then if you have uh, prescription drugs in the house, kids can get to those too. 
but they're not going to want it's not flavored like candy. My prescription drugs don't taste good. Uh, it's not about, a sucker. It's not what chocolate. About, uh, what about Tide Pods? <laughs> that's just yeah, Darwinism. Uh, that's just <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right? Darwinism. They fall off the, the the washer. The kids go after them like candy. Well, I mean, because the, they're brightly colored, and they should probably change right. that too. Uh, but right. my, my, right. my point. I mean, is, I'm just throwing a devil's advocate out there. Uh, you know, I I you know I agree with you about the fact that I think the edibles uh, have to be uh, at least uh, has to have packaging that says things on it. To but, warn but people you about aren't these. responsible enough to take that responsibility into their own hands that their kids can't get well, it. But I'm not and gonna, that's just I'm, 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 not I'm not going to sanitize the world because people are fucking idiots. That's right. Just, right, Especially Rob? nowadays, though, that there are more idiots that are parents nowadays, I'll tell you. I've been idiots for years. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah, hear well. more about all the shit that happens now that you didn't hear about. Oh, you know, ridiculous. With, yeah, you know. the world has become such a small place with media and all the ways we hear about stuff. I don't think much has really changed. It's just that everything is there now in your face. His parents are still locking their kids in cars and all that. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. My GPS has a my ways. There's a setting in there. Do you want a reminder that you have a kid in the car? Yeah. What the <laughs> hell you need that for? I mean, because well, people are just in the back seat. I never, have, have, to I never have to worry. I never have to. I never have to worry about having a kid in the car. I don't have any. Yeah, me yeah, either. But I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I, I I've never understood that. You know. I don't oh, know. that's what you Maybe think, Rebel Fano. Oh, uh, well, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I just happened right forget down about the street kids. here. What's with these the, people? The leave? last heat wave we had at Target. Yeah. You know, everybody's on the Facebook going, "Oh, they just they just found a kid in a car in a hot road." You know what? What are you waiting for the cops to come for? Break the window. Break the damn window. Yeah. Or, uh, but also, how about people leave their pets in hot cars? Pets, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I leave notes They're on windows alive. several times. If there was one parent whose kid died in in a car, and the reaction to the to that was from the parent. I didn't know the kid was back there. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Oh, how do you have on. like a three year old kid and you don't know he's in the back seat? You and know? the excuses are all parents are busy nowadays. Really? <laughs> well, maybe the problem is that we force parents to put their kids in the back seat because that's supposedly the safest place in a car seat. But if they had car seats for the front seat, at least the parents would know the kids were right next to them. And they right. couldn't use no, that I'd as an excuse. I'd still put them in the back seat because it is a safer place. What, the back seat? I always put my kids in the back oh, seat. Yeah, my but, kids don't even know what the front seat is. But if you had a, a, a rig that would uh, uh, make it so that they can't get out of that front seat, you know, that if I, there was an I've told my daughter, even to this <laughs> day, she's 13 years old. Mm -hmm. She sits on the side in the back, and I got a F-250 pickup truck. You know, it takes a tank to beat that thing. Yeah. She, Driver's side still will sit, side. she will still sit in the middle of the back. Oh, okay. But, you, but you know, you're a decent parent. You know she's back there, right? Yeah, yeah. She made it to 13, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, check your cargo for Christ's and, sake. And it's amazing how many kids every year get killed in hot cars. It is yeah, just, it's, it's astounding. It's ridiculous. It's hey, usually you can... people. It's it's usually people who are out of their norm. Somebody was supposed to take the kid to school but couldn't. So somebody else did, and they get sidetracked, and they don't think about it because they don't normally do this, and they're in a rush, and that's what happens. Uh, but yeah. what about the lady down the street that goes to Target and just the gets casino. out of the car and goes in? <laughs> yeah, well, that's just stupidity. <laughs> Jason, exactly. That's my point. Jason. I just wanted to put this out there because I know I haven't called in in a while. And it was one of the shows I was listening to. And it was about with guns and cars. They always compare the two with guns and cars. You know, cars kill people, too. They are doing something about cars. They are trying to take the driver out of the picture and try to make cars so they're automated so that the cars have more responsibility than the human does and not kill people. But they're not doing well, that so guns. far, the problem they have with automation in cars is, is that the people who do have it think that the car is now, they don't have to do as much driving or be aware of what's going on. And it doesn't mean that just because your car is driving itself, you shouldn't be aware of where it's going and what it's doing because you but may have to But eventually the car over. will be doing everything and you will be doing nothing. Their question, Long time from now. Their, Long time. Their, I'll be dead. Yeah, they're questioning. Ten years. They're no way. They're no way. No. They're, they're questioning it's whether gonna it's going to be. It's going to be sooner than later. No way. 
No way. First of all, what are you going to do with every car on the road that has to drive? It's that you had, that you need to drive. No, that's 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 the later part of it. You know, that's the cars will have sensors to keep distance from those cars that don't communicate with them. Yeah. Boy, you it's know, going to be a lot later than, than I, sooner. I hate to but. say this. I hate <clears throat> to say this, and and I may sound like an old fart in saying this, but there's a pleasure to driving. I agree with you. I, I love do driving. Too. I love it. You know, love and, I hate it, but I would feel more comfortable because that's the way I was raised: is me controlling that wheel and that throttle than a machine. Me too. But, I drove for a living, and I loved it. I do love it. Yeah, I love I love taking long trips and going out to the countryside and driving through yep. it. You know, uh, yep. and not for speeding or anything like that. I do it at a nice, reasonable rate. But I just, right, you absolutely, know. I love it. But, but you I think still, about I still... you think right. about uh, someone that's handicapped that can't drive. Look at the look at the freedom it would give somebody like that. Oh, I just think about my mother who you we know? took her light, we took her driving driving privileges away, and it's killing her. Exactly. She hates it, you know. I'm, I'm getting close to doing that with my uh, my mom, and and then I got mm -hmm. a friend that's gonna be in a wheelchair pretty soon with ALS, and he's not gonna be able to drive. And he was a driver like me, right. and he's gonna end up in a wheelchair and not be able to drive. And if he can't drive, I know he's gonna go nuts. Uh, Phil, why has, do Phil has? Why do rich? Why do rich people want chauffeurs? <laughs> So they can get drunk and go home. No, to drive. Because yeah, you know, it, it, when you can afford it, driving is is for the masses. I would much rather sit in the back seat, relax, no, read a book, listen to some music, and tell the guy where to go. Never, Let him worry about apparently finding. Apparently, you never space. took a fun-filled road trip, Phil. I love driving. But see, hey, but I, Phil, I've driven across the country. I drove see, across Phil, the country. I'd rather be that guy driving that that rich person around. I drove. Hmm. I drove across the country with my Take friend minimum Jackie, wage, and we had a great time. That was just a <laughs> wonderful time. Yeah, it's different strokes. People who love cars are going to always love well, to drive. I, Nothing know, like getting... I love getting behind the wheel of my vet and just cruising on yeah. a country road. There's nothing like it. It's not driving in traffic every morning, going to work, stop and go. No, nobody likes that. But the ability to get into a car and yeah. feel it hug the road and make a nice turn in the car and just glide. Oh, I love that. Or an I old car with a nice and motor And by the way, Phil, to answer like your that, question no. about well, why do people have chauffeurs, is because they're pricks. Yes, uh, Jason... <laughs> I still think they're doing wrong investments and do, doing uh, self-driving cars. I think it's going to be drones. By the time they get the self-driving car right, the technology for drones to be shuttling people around is going to be out there. Well, it's just going to be uh, drones. Uh, and drones and the sure. Russians will figure a way to drop the people from the drones. All yeah, the there drones. you go. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I, I agree with They'll you. Have a plot I, drop. I do agree with you about drones. There are some ideas of like drone taxis. For it. Yeah, it looked look like about, a telephone booth with it, fucking it, blades on the top of it. Yeah. yeah, they were talking about Uber having those pod cars that fly. You put four people in them and they pick them up and take them from one spot to another mm -hmm. on top of buildings and stuff. Well, uh, and, uh, and the driver uh, to beat be, you uh, up. To begin with, drones are yeah. probably would be raped. would be safer <laughs> even than helicopters because of just the nature of how they take off in the land. You know, they don't just go crashing. Right. Unmanned drones, huh? Well, uh, yep. I, I, they'll be manned. They'll be shipping men around. You know something? Yeah. Your your airplane flight when you take an airplane somewhere <laughs> is complete is mostly automated. Yeah, except the most the and most the, critical the, spots. Well, not even take the most critical landing. spots. Nope. All nope. of that. Nope. All of that's that is mo that's mostly computerized as well. Yes, but you know why we have a pilot there? So you feel good. Well, you like know. Sully, Sullenberger. Yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah, somebody who can take in over. An emergency. He had know, to take an over. Emergency. Yeah. But basically, they, you know, I could land a plane. I just say, hey, bring me in. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, it's, it's programmed. Yeah. So. You'd be surprised how much it's programmed. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you like to know there's somebody there. And I think the same thing's true with, with automated cars. People would like to know they have some control over it. Yes, Jeff? When I was in Italy, um, the uh, driver uh, had a, a small bus, but it was a bus. And uh, he got pulled over by the police because he didn't have the belt on top. And they went through him. It took an hour to get How rid of How much did he have to pay? I don't know. 
That's what the police do in Italy. They shake yeah. you down. That's yeah. just like in the Philippines. Yeah. Well, I got, I got same shaking. as the Philippines. It's well, corrupt. When I came you pay back, off the cops and when I came yeah. back to New York, I got a ticket from Florence, Italy, in the mail, because really? they they had taken a photograph of me going. Going down a street at a certain time, you weren't supposed to go down the street. But how was I to know? I can't read the street signs. <laughs> did you it pay a it? Souvenir. Uh, yeah, I paid it. I want to go back there and rent a car again sometime, maybe. <laughs> they did that to me in Pennsylvania on a toll road. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, God. Yeah. I ripped right through a toll road and didn't know it. I yeah. looked up and I said, I wonder what that sign now, was, I was for. Hoping, uh. I, was hoping, I was hoping Ray would call tonight. He usually does, but he's not tonight because he had a pissing match going on my Facebook page with, uh, with, with Phil. And I would love to have hear, heard that had that pissing match play itself out here on the air, but apparently Ray isn't calling. So, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, we were talking about... Um, uh, South Africa, what's happening to those farmers, and that, uh, it, and I basically made the argument that uh, people are being boxed into the corner because these guys are white, and uh, and it's and they're being attacked by blacks, and therefore uh, it's uh, well. If you it, if you believe, Ray said if, it was if, if you bigotry. If you to believe protect that, the because, whites. because so you start, don't like that the indigenous well, it, people are. Beating the uh, occupiers. Uh, <laughs> the indigenous people really. Welcome to America. That's what us Mexicans are doing. We're going <laughs> to yeah. beat you slowly by marrying your, your daughters. <laughs> are you MS 13? Well, I think he is. <laughs> I don't think. Maybe he can't count that were, high. Right? You, know, you know what uh, What Jason's doing is he's causing global warming. If you look behind him, he has a ride on lawnmower. Mm. And uh, these ride-on lawnmowers nice. are zero turn, yeah. nice efficiency. Right, that's but nice. they uh, they produce the carbon footprint and uh, create global warming. Well, and nice, uh, nice you know, to get that you, lecture. You, you, from you landowners trying to make it feel like my motherland of Mexico. Yeah, I mean, you, you landowners, you you you, you, uh, the, you the guy who who v uh, venerates a an asshole who is taking back all the regulations that kept us from coughing. You well, know. that's so Jason can have that uh, polluting device behind him. How often do you use that polluting device, Jason? Once a week. Okay, so <laughs> I don't. I don't think he's really. And how for how long? Uh, uh, half hour. Okay, so I don't think he. Hour. I don't think he's polluting more than anything else does. So. Wait, hey, Phil, I have to tell you about uh, the, my local power company. They're rebuilding a power plant. They're calling it three power plants in one because they're going to be doing natural gas, solar, and wind out of the same power plant. Yeah. And the natural gas, they say, is 70% more efficient than any coal, clean coal-powered plant. 70%. Oh. It's in their own interest. Coal is dead. Well, you know, I want, a, I want a Toyota Mirai. I keep looking at them. I keep going online and seeing what they look like in different colors and those are the ones that are hydrogen cars but uh they need a few more gas stations they only get about 320 miles on a tank and the gas and stations are 500 miles between no they're, they're 20 miles the closest one is san ramon my uh, work truck was a natural gas truck it could be easily converted to hydrogen but it was uh they, there are so few stations yeah. and they kept on going down all the time it just wasn't hey, feasible look, look who's here how, how, look, say, look, how safe are those in collisions though yeah. Uh, they're supposed they're, they're to be fine. They, they say that you could shoot the tank with a freaking gun and it's not going to. I used to. I used to, do those, that, I used to do that portion where I worked, and the, the tanks are 5,500 5, PSI tanks. Yeah, and they're okay. built like a brick shit look, house. Look, you could, look, you can, look, look who's So, what I was thinking when I yeah. lived in Silicon Valley, this. So, Phil, this is a big deal because Southern California, all the really rich asshole freaking movie people got their hydrogen stations years ago and really? nobody in northern california got any hydrogen stations until recently but my idea was all you have to do because our buses are all hydrogen is to tap a line across from on 237 and just tap a line from the bus trans trans terminal or <laughs> the, and then bring it across the street and then the regular people could have natural gas we just but built nobody ever that was a good idea. Power to the built, people. They just built the reformer in Santa Clara, so there'll be more coming. Well, let me. Let yeah, me so it's, the company I work for has them. 
and they're going to yeah. put a bunch of stations in Northern California. The reason they didn't build more in Northern California is because the, the grants ran out. Uh, it, I, I like the idea movie, that movie stars had them. that water. Comes yeah, they got them all down south because I was down there trying to set up some of the stations. It was the movie stars. And so what they did is they petitioned the uh, they petitioned. Was it Honda or BMW? To bring yeah. those cars into it's Southern Toyota. California. Toyota. Yeah. It was Toyota. It's Toyota. Yeah. No, and, one, and no, one... no, it was one of it's so uh, uh, one of the really high end cars because a bunch of the really snotty uh, Hollywood people wanted it, so they oh. banded together in their. Well, Lexus is one Lexus. of the higher end cars that Toyota yeah. makes, but they, the the stations that they put in the, down there were pretty primitive too. They were pulling in <laughs> hydrogen tube trailers and tying them to the ground. <laughs> So Jason, yeah, we didn't have it in Northern California. Jason had his hand up. Yes, Jason. I was gonna say with the natural gas stations, though, it's a million dollars per pump. So that's why they're not <sighs> as prevalent. Oh, see, it was just so close, and I figured they, the truck has to stop there anyway. How? How? By the way, you're on the Big Island of Hawaii. How are oh. you doing with the? So I heard Jim earlier. So by the way, I listen to you guys when I start, but. At five o'clock, I have to jump off to watch the weather. So, uh, Jim's side got the worst, and is still getting the worst. Our, uh, I think, our highest wind shear was about seventy miles an hour. It was like sixty-seven, but I'm bumping up. Uh, we still had quite a few uh, wind problems today. We lost power last night and today, and. Um, there's a few roads that have rock slides on them, but they're minor ones, like as in it could be cleaned up in like an hour kind of thing. Not that you have to bring a bulldozer right. in or anything right. like that. So basically, if you don't have to go outside, they want your ass inside, and, and everybody seems to be playing that game. And, and that's so what you're doing. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing is, is it's already stopped raining. When Jim was on, it was raining. And then what I just heard on the news is it's no longer a hurricane. It's a tropical storm. So everybody on Oahu and Kauai can have a big sigh of relief. Now, let me ask you a question. Because a, it's not going to hit them as a hard. A few years yeah. ago, um, a big storm hit Kauai. You remember Aniki? that? Huh? 1992. Uh, yeah, yeah and, 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 it was an EK. And, and you, you know what, what was what was finishing up filming at that time? Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. They almost they they got they got it finished, but uh, it had a problem, you know. But that they <laughs> but Kauai literally was leveled. Didn't Kauai get flooded like two years ago? No, no fly, Hawaii, Kauai. No, just Kauai. Got, yeah, Kauai just got fifty inches of rain in May in twenty four hours. Yeah. Oh my it God. just and got the road was out. Oh yeah. Well, how was the sewer system then? No. Oh man, people don't even have houses to live in. They, they don't have places to shit. So no. speaking, no, they do. speaking, speaking of sewer really well. systems, speaking of sewer systems, uh, and I don't want to be too graphic about this, but t today I, I I hadn't gone to the bathroom in several days. I took what we could call one of the most enormous dumps I've ever taken in my life. Okay. I mean bowel movements. A dump, I think, is a better way to describe this one. Okay. Okay. Why go pyro? Was it long? At, it, Major submarine. Yes, it was long, oh, and it was it? it was long, and it was thick. Okay. Now oh, let me God. just say this. So what I did was, as you normally do, I flushed the toilet. Guess what? It came back up. The toilet completely plugged up. It rejected your poop. And I tried, I must have plunged it for a fucking hour break. before I could get that stuff loose. Oh, well. Thank yeah. you for the visual. Well, no, but I had, to, I had to tell you about its size before I told you that I had a absolute plugged up toilet, you know. Did you take a, a picture? Wow. No, I didn't I take a something. picture. Yeah, Kevin, we went down. Yeah, actually, I like Jeez, I only went down for water. I come back and this. <laughs> I won't even ask. Go yeah, on, go online, go online, oh. Phil. Look up <laughs> anaconda. Jealous, look up so, anaconda, and you will get an idea of what this looked like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard you earlier talking about there hasn't been that many um, hurricanes in Hawaii, and there's actually been quite a few. Really? It's the bulk of them don't make land. That's uh -huh. what I said. Yeah. They just don't. There've probably been 
uh, like ten hits. Well, if you uh, on if you, all it, the islands, but they just don't hit them. If you think about it, the Hawaiian them. Islands are kind of a dot in the Pacific, you yeah. know. So there's a lot of Pacific <laughs> out there. Alex yeah. was trying to make a case for global warming and the uh, recent hurricanes. Well, let's talk about this. Actually, this is we were really, really worried about this. Remember last year the hurricane in Houston, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was very, very large or a good size, and it had half of its hurricane or some of its hurricane or some of the mass is over the water and some of the mass was over the land. And what it was doing is it was going over the water and picking up a whole bunch of water and then going over the land and then dropping the water on the land. And that's where the flooding came in. They were really worried because this was a very, very slow hurricane, like two miles, five miles. They were very worried we were going to get that Galveston flooding situation, but it didn't. Uh, hopefully it won't. Well, happen. the Galveston, the flooding situation in Houston also happened because they built a lot of homes on areas where they never should have. They were low lands. And, I agree and, with that. And, you know, mm -hmm. when I lived in Houston, that all area was all nobody lived there. OK. And as the years have gone on, for instance, the center of Houston has moved like 12 miles north. This, uh, you know, so that for, because of all the building and they built on land that shouldn't have been built on because that was land that in case a storm like that were to happen, you know, uh, it was it was going to uh, be a, a disaster, which, of course, it was. But what I'm saying and Phil, uh, global warming uh, has to do with the heating of the water. And when the water temperature gets warm, hurricanes are more abundant. And, and they're slow. They're they're bulkier. Yeah. Is what we're finding out. Yeah. Is what we're uh, finding. Are those or curtains, Renee, or are nope. they protection protection Absolutely. for the wind? Who who I wants to see a, a boarded up house? Ah, okay, that's what oh, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> so you you board it up. Yep, I did. Due to the wind. Well, when it okay. hit when it hit a cat. Four, so all of the rest of the emergency <sighs> stuff I've already done. But when it hit a Category 4 and it was headed for Hilo, if it was a Category 4 and it hit land, it was going to be a bad idea. So I boarded up. So I'm going to take it all down tomorrow. But, Phil, I was actually going to ask you a question. I wanted to go around the thing and ask everybody, what's in your go bag? Meaning that if somebody told you you had to leave the house right now, you've got five minutes to get your shit and get it out. What's in your go bag? What's that my wife and my son. 45 caliber and two boxes of ammo. <laughs> He's waiting for the apocalypse. How about, how about you, Rob? Do you have a go question. bag? I don't have a go bag. I'm staying here and I'm dying with everybody. <laughs> Fuck it. Good for you. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't I, believe in all this apocalyptic bullshit. I when have found. Oh, 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 uh, Jeff, do you, have a, do you have a go bag? I, I have been through a number of things like earthquakes and things where uh, the, the area has been shut down for three or four days. San Francisco, mm -hmm. Alex went through it. I find that if you go 100 miles away, it's like it never happened. So my yeah. go bag is to get into the car and get the hell out and stay at a hotel somewhere in Stockton or L.A. or wherever uh, it's away from what's going on because it isn't going to do me any good to be here. I don't think that's the nature of the question. It's well, okay. It, you know, hey, you check into a nice hotel. No, but that's not the name. We, uh, we and talk, ride we're, it we're, out. We're talking about go His bags. His go bag is money. You, you yeah. just say you don't have a go bag. I don't have a it's, go bag. Do you have one, Jason? No, you don't I have, have a credit one. card. You don't have one, do you, Kevin? No. Does not anybody per se. have? A, extra cash on hand in case there's no ATMs. Oh, I nope. have there's extra any... cash on hand. I have gold in my safe and I have MREs in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> I like the MRE. I a go bag was something that they uh, they they uh, suggested after 9-11 working in Manhattan was to keep comfortable shoes and a change of clothes and stuff at your desk. So if you had to you know, leave the office and you were going to be walking a long way, make sure you had some snacks, make sure you had a comfortable pair of shoes, maybe a change of clothes, whatever. Yeah. Thank How about you, a Rob. gas mask? No, uh, that was another one, yeah. You're they right. They lied about For a while. that. They lied uh, about that. Uh, the, um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, yeah, in San Francisco... It was against the law to sleep naked. <laughs> you walk around naked? No, to, to sleep naked. 
Just because, well, because when they had now. the 1906 earthquake, people were jumping out of buildings naked. Oh, wow. A terrible. And, and since it happened at night, it was because they were sleeping and they, weren't, they didn't have any clothes on. So they made it against the law in San Francisco, and I think it may still be a law. They just never enforce it, force it to, to sleep naked. Well, I'd be arrested. Uh, you don't have any clothes on? You sleep naked? I like to sleep without clothes. Oh, okay. I sleep, okay, I, I, thank I, you for the visual I, on the I, film I, I, side I, tonight. I, I, We've I got the film, Alex visual about his BM and Bill's <laughs> naked visual about PJs. Well, I think I think the BM. Anybody want to add to this? The BM is less uh, is less uh, nauseating than thinking of Phil naked. So you know, <laughs> yeah, I, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I yeah, guess. Yeah, but uh, no, I don't. I sleep with a t-shirt. Oh, a, a, a t-shirt and underpants. Straight yeah. up underpants boxers. Underpants are boxers. Yeah. It's boxers. You wear he's boxers. Probably whitey tidies, I think. No, he's not a whitey tidy at night. No. Men can't wear whitey tidy at night because it keeps their junk too warm and that actually messes with your sperm count, right? Yeah. So you have to have uh, boxers. What sperm night. count? I'm sorry. <laughs> Who uses those anymore? <laughs> One, two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Our, my I made sure I had my sperm count is zero. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Phil did too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate to interrupt. What? Get rid of those I have stuff. to say goodnight because I got to sleep upstairs with my mother tonight. Oh, uh, you keep calling me. Yeah, you didn't even give her say, a kiss. For well, me. you say you have to say goodnight. You didn't even say hello. Oh, goodnight. I, I want to talk to wait, you today, but I'll have to wait, make wait, wait, wait. Start off. Wait, wait, wait. First, say hello. What's that? Say hello. Hello. Okay. Then you can say goodbye. Goodnight. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Tony with that wonderful room ambience. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yes. Tony. Thank you. Uh, for talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, hear, I hear your father. Okay, Tony. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, yeah, hold on a second. Doing, <laughs> I hear. I hear. I hear, I hear your. She came I hear your. So she's all worried. Is he? Is he? Is he okay? He his kidneys are high, so they have him his kidney failure. But the points went down to like four, but it's still not good. Yeah. So my mother's worried. She thinks I'm hiding something from. Her. I talked to that. We're not hiding anything. Yeah. So is we don't know anything kidney? more until they can get it down. So they're running tests. So she's like a nervous wreck. So I'm going to sleep upstairs tonight. Is yeah. he on dialysis? No, not yet. So they don't think he has to, but they're monitoring him. So I don't know anything else. So I got to talk to the doctor probably tomorrow with my brother. Yeah. Well, Good luck to well, uh, my, be my best thoughts to you. Okay. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you next week, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Tony. Yeah. He's not on dialysis. He's just on die. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to be I wanted to. I, I wanted to. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Steve, Steve, your phone is terribly yeah. loud tonight. Oh, hold on. Let me hold on. Let me do it this way. It's probably better. Just hit the mute yeah. button and then talk. Yeah, yeah. Hit yeah, the mute button yeah, and then is, talk. This is uh, no, no, no. It, uh, it, uh, I was. I had the speaker on. So. Well, no, but we. we you're very loud tonight for some reason. Wow. Oh, I'll, I'll back off a little. Um, the um, back, the back, reason back I called off further, she, further. <laughs> uh, the reason I called is um, still too loud. I, <laughs> uh, yes. I, I I wanted to say one of the reasons that uh, the main reason why I don't sleep without any clothes on, though oh, I, I don't sleep naked, is because if it's hot and you you know I, I sleep on my side I can't sleep on my back I hate it and if your your skin touches your skin and it's hot it's too hot I have to if, if nothing else at least underwear with a t-shirt or something an undershirt because the skin against the skin then I get too hot why well, this you just brought this show to a grinding halt good but thank you <laughs> Kevin, do you want to tell us what you Thanks for the make? contribution. Yes, Jason. No. <laughs> I think you should make a show of Steve, Mike, and SG. Yeah. And then me and, and then I can just I can just leave the room. Yeah. yeah. Do that too. Oh boy. That would wow. be painful. Yeah. Maybe have Phil be the moderator. But, well no, I was thinking I was thinking of uh, Brian. Brian would be a good moderator. Because oh, yeah. every other word coming out of his mouth is fuck, so you know. <laughs> what do you mean, what the fuck? 
<laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that cricket. Yeah. So, should record it. It's so nice. How did you get excited about a cricket? Is all I wanted to know. Who me? Well, Jason, when you said it, Jason's like, okay, they're excited about my cricket in the garage. What's the deal? Well, I just, you know, I look. I live in New York City. When's the last time? Crickets? When? When's the last time I ever heard a cricket? I heard. He falls like, asleep to gunshots. I think once I heard a cricket cough, but that's about it. You know? <laughs> Do you hear crickets Ooh. every time you did stand-up comedy? I never did stand-up comedy. Who, who was? Who wrote the? Yeah, I think it was in in school a long time ago. It was a, a kid story. It was uh, remember the the cricket in Times Square? Can't say that I did. Yeah, I, I remember the name of it, but. It was it was like in grade school in elementary school, you know. Yeah. Alex, we can send you some crickets that you can have in your house as pets. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, Are we, those cicadas I mean, wait, wait, wait or minute. crickets? Now, I went to a I went to a restaurant in uh, in uh, China. Uh, wait a minute. With Viet, uh, Vietnam, it had Vietnamese. What 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 did I have? Noodles and black beans, black sauce, <laughs> and it was wonderful in this place. But what With they had, black crickets? Wait a minute, those black crickets. No, but no, but what they had on the at the entrance to the place on a table by the door were these giant crickets, and while you were eating, you would hear the crickets. In fact, if you ever go see my videotape and I'm in the, that restaurant, you'll hear crickets in the background uh crickets but aren't uh, they dinner no they're kind of in in asian cultures they're looked upon kind of as pets oh. uh they're because and they're looked upon as good luck that's because huh. they eat the dogs cool oh yeah right dogs. yeah no they don't so eat the, the dogs so what's the difference Steve? between a cricket and a cicada huh oh what cicadas the noise they make is from rubbing their leg against their body, the same they thing. Only do it once and a, a lot years. of people, yeah, a lot of people mistake uh, cicadas for. Uh, I Locus. think there's one that's similar that's called a uh, uh, Katie did. Katie did, yeah, yeah, and people uh, often at times think. Oh, cicadas! That cicadas it, it, cicadas yeah. can drive you crazy. They're so noisy, in in bulk. Uh, in Greece, yeah. when I was on uh, uh, Samos on the island of Greece, uh, they had cicadas like crazy, uh, and and you almost couldn't hear yourself think they were loud, so, so loud. They have a short lifespan, and like yes. Jason said, they come around what every seventeen years. They don't have a short lifespan because right. they live for seven years. They oh, get, they do. Their, yeah, their embryo or the larvae goes into the ground, and they bore themselves into the ground for like seven years, and then they come out, well, I, well, and then that part yeah, is short. Yeah, I, was they, there, yeah, I was the there. I was there. noise. I was yeah. there when they came out, when they were coming out that year, and there was all that noise. It was amazing. It was just amazing. Well, we've certainly run out of topics, haven't we? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tell you what I love is bullfrogs. Oh. Okay. Those uh, sound cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we have run out of topics. <laughs> hey, so I have to ask. There was a show I was listening to with, uh, on uh, the intersection with Steve, mm -hmm. and you were talking about seeing uh, UFOs. I just had to oh, ask, yeah. were you blind at that time, too? <laughs> uh, same, same eyesight, yeah. But, you know, you can't miss a light. That, you know, I, I still think... The people who. I, I'm um, sorry, Steve. It was a joke. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. What if you were really yeah, on the freeway and it wasn't a UFO? <clears throat> no, this was this was right over my house. Uh, you know, I, it was no way it was a weather balloon. This was a bright, <laughs> bright light. Nice. You man. know. Um, yeah, <laughs> my eyes are, are bad, but they're not that bad. I'm telling you, it looked like um, when they throw the the color of so, the so light. So they're good enough. They're good enough that you know when you're finished wiping your ass, right? Right. <laughs> the, the color of the light, except that, that it didn't sparkle, is like when they throw a flare down on the road with the that. It was like that red, pinkish, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there was no sound. And he'll do it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that that there was there was no sound. 
I all I could see was the light, and it looked really like it was not too far, maybe 30 feet above the house, and it just stopped. I don't know what that could have been. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know. They, they have the new helicopters that have been around recently because they knew the storm was coming, so some of the military branched out to the other islands. And Kevin, remind me to tell you the cool thing I saw about the truck. Anyway, one of the Osprey flew over the, he, uh, over the house, and it's like, that's just the weirdest sounding thing. And then you realize it's not a regular helicopter. That's why it sounds different. The Osprey, so it's, it's is, a a, the Osprey is a plane. Oh, that, oh, okay. Osprey is a plane that can land vertically, right? Yeah. yeah, and when you mm -hmm. see those rotors going, it's pretty wild. So it sounds a little bit like a helicopter, but it's so far off of its norm, you have to stop and go, what the heck was yeah. that? The, the, and British, it it's gone. the British had one that started with an H. Uh, I, I forgot the name of it. But yeah, it also, I was starting to wonder, too, the Hilo or the... No, it wasn't the, the Hilo. Harrier, but it was Harrier. The, Harrier. Harrier, yeah, yeah that's Harrier. it. Harrier Jets. That one's badass. Yeah. Uh, I would say it, it, the most likely it would that what what you just said it would it was probably something military yeah yeah we have to watch that over here because some of the they they do exercises here so you kind of got to watch before you open your mouth and say damn did you see that light last night yes they right were blowing right, stuff right. Up down the street well let's get back to cigars <laughs> yeah uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> which i i've only smoked probably Hey, Renee, do you like cigars? I've taken <laughs> before. I have. And uh, they're not bad. It just depends on the taste. I've gotten some from, I've had a, one from Cuba, some South Africa. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, there's a liquor store that sells cigars from Kauai, which I had no idea Kauai. I mean, I knew they had tobacco plants, but... I didn't know they sported cigars. So there's Kauai hand-rolled Kauai cigars. Oh, good. Hey, listen, let me mention something uh, before we get out of here tonight, and that is that I'm doing this show on Sunday uh, yeah. on Westwood One, uh, and um, uh, uh, we will be taking calls. Uh, they're going to be short, though. You know, it's not going to be like what, this. What, what time will it be on? I'm not telling you. 6 a.m. Uh, <laughs> okay. 6, 6, 6, do, 6 not, do not call, Steve, okay? I please, won't. Please I don't promise. call. Uh, and we have to use our adult words for this group? Yes, you have, it's, it's adult conversation. And not, okay. not adult conversation. Well, it's clean. Yeah, no, no, no curse words. words. I mean, it's radio. There's going to be somebody. Internet. There's going to be somebody oh, in you, Philadelphia Rob. who can push a button and bleep you out, but I don't want them to have to work overtime. Okay. Uh, uh, I will listen, it, it, if but you, I won't. Uh, okay, participate. fine. Thank you. Uh, if, yeah. if 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 <laughs> if you want to call, they're going to be short calls, and you may have to wait online for a while before you can talk. It's you know, it's it's yeah, terrestrial. Sure. It's terrestrial. <laughs> what? What do you mean, sure? Yeah, sure. What do you mean, sure? What is that supposed yeah, to be? Well, you're going to let him on? You know, he, 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 even Rush Limbaugh doesn't get enough callers. Uh, from know? what I understand from Walter, he gets quite a few. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff. Oh, that's good. Yeah, what's the station in Philadelphia? W. Uh, it's not Philadelphia. It's Washington. WMAL.com you go to. WMAL in Baltimore? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. they're in Baltimore, yeah. Yeah. And you can, uh, you can listen to it there. Uh, listen live. Six thirty kilocycles. Yeah, something like that. Doesn't matter. Sam? You're going on the internet. Uh, yes, Sam. Uh, right. Yes, Sam. Jason. So I was just. It was been in my head. You've been keep on talking about that. You might talk about uh, age discrimination in your job in the radio and stuff. If you ever think you have any hope whatsoever of getting a radio job, do you think it's a really a good idea <laughs> to sit there and say how you've been discriminated against because you're old? Well, that's a part of the reason I'm doing it is that I want to say that this is a career killer. And then I'm going to do something on really radio. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do Even, something. If I'm you gonna, want to do some fill-ins or something like that, I, I am the first person to sit there and jump up and open my mouth about injustices. But, but I've at been the same si time. Hey, look, first of all, I've been sitting here for five fucking years and nobody's called me. Okay? That's for starters. 
And the only guy that might uh, like wait a minute, film, the only right? guy that's asked me to do it is Walter, and he may have me do it again. Okay, so uh, 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 Sabo? No. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite, yeah. Yeah, right. So, uh, <laughs> I don't no, think that, so that's going to be part of the premise of what I'm doing, is I'm going to say that I, before the show is over, I'm going to do something that's so injurious to my career that nobody else would dare do it. That really? The movie stars don't tell you how old they are. Uh, 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 radio people, <clears throat> television people don't tell you how old they are. Uh, most people lie about their age. Okay, and most people are in fear of losing their jobs because people will find out they're too old. It's true. Uh, and and uh, this is the one discrimination that takes place in this country we do nothing about. It takes yeah, place in your industry, but you know it I have takes found place in sales. It, it, it takes place everywhere, Phil. Every industry, Phil. Everywhere, it does. Phil. I don't yeah, know what you does. know. Maybe not in in flooring or whatever, but I'm telling yeah. you, it, most people. Uh, are, forget about just my business. You know, most people c can't find a job after 50. Mm. Yep. yep. Walk away, Phil, and try to get a job. Yeah. 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 I'd like to hire a few people <laughs> over 50. Maybe they have a work ethic. Okay, I'll be up. I'll, yeah, well, I'll that, apply. that's very nice, Phil. Come but on that, doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't mean that's the way things are. And uh, so, I mean, I'm just going to talk about the fact that it's, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be I'm gonna play with it and not be serious about it, but I'm going to say, hey, you know, I mean, you listen to my voice. If you didn't know how old I was, how old would you think I was? 76. Oh, Tiny. shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 Alex, you sound uh, old. Like, 54. You sound like you're I mean, 40s or 50s. 105.3. Most people say my voice has not changed in the last 20 years. I don't really hasn't. That. Yeah. I don't yeah, it that. sounds really. It sounds good. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, I'm not going to tell people guess how old I am because I, they'll go to Google and find out. You'll go to Wikipedia right. and find right. out. But I'm going to wait till the end of the show to tell them how old I am. But I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, tr idea. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to do something that's a little uh, off the beaten track with the show yeah. that other people wouldn't yeah. do, you know. Uh, and uh, Any any contests? No. Yeah. no. Well, well you know, guess the magic I've, number. I've, spoken, I've spoken to people that I know yeah. that are in HR or in temporary uh, businesses that are, you know, filled temporary positions and stuff, and they won't say it on the record, but off the record, they say it happens all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yep. Uh, they, you know, I talked to them because I was looking for a job myself. And uh, look, Kevin, if if fifteen years if worth were, of uh, if you were if you were any younger, you couldn't play Santa Claus, right? You know, but, and, well, if uh, I shaved uh, well, up my beard, I wouldn't look. Jason older. had his hand up. Yes, Jason. Uh, I, I was going to say when I remember the first time I listened to you on uh, Sirius, that uh, the only thing that gave your age away was like the theme music and stuff that you were playing. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this must be some old guy or something. It was a great American broadcast, you know, oh, no, well, music. That, no, but that that particular thing I would have played when I was 18, you know. I know you would have be, be, because you're that old. No, <laughs> no, no. I pl the great American broadcast was, I thought, when, were I heard, when, today, when, when I heard it, I said, that's that. the perfect theme song. Because if I don't use, I if I it. if I don't use it, some right wing asshole is going to use it, and I want to appropriate yep. it yep. first. You know, they'll use it anyway. But then you think about. <laughs> I, I, I don't think uh, when the movie was out, I, I don't think Alex was even born. I wasn't. Yet. No, I wasn't alive when it came out. It was. It came no. out in nineteen thirty three, thirty four, thirty two or three. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know. Then you think about the days of Live 105 when they played the music there, and they'd think, who is this old fart, right? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing I thought about the other day, and uh, it, it's something that bears mentioning. Uh, when I was born, there was no television. I, I, wasn't yeah, television was. invented in like 1925? Sure, yeah. uh, no, it wasn't they, in the mainstream. Very it, early. They yeah. didn't, you couldn't go out and actually. buy a television set till about 1948. Okay? Yeah. And we got ours in 1950 because television hit San Francisco about 1949. Okay? <laughs> uh, in my lifetime, I've gone from no television 
to carrying it around in my hand. Yeah. I mean, we had black yeah, and white. Yeah, unbelievable. That's what I remember, black yeah. and white. And, and Thanks, big Steve thing Jobs. to get the color. And I may be old, but I, you know, I, I'm not so old that it's amazing how much has changed in just my lifetime. Yeah, I, I, and I, and and even I, in mine. And I th- I'm, I, I'm only 52. And I think that if my, my parents were to say how much had been had changed from the time they were born, it wouldn't be as much of a jump as has happened in my lifetime. They no. might not measure it in technology. Their jump might have been infrastructure. Well, I mean, when my father was born, he was born in 1906. Uh, uh, auto, automobiles were just starting now. Airplane, yeah. flight, automobiles flight up to yeah. automatic no washers and stuff. Yeah, no paved roads, shit like that. And by the time he died, you know, my father had a had a, had several cars in his lifetime. You know, so I mean, it, it it it. But I think the seed change of what's happened over my lifetime is 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 amazing. You know, in and, the last twenty years. You know, has been yeah, such a big jump. It's been big crazy in the well, last 20, some, 30 years. Yeah. S- somebody said it's that not you know, every so often we exponentially grow further. There, isn't there something, uh, Rob, in the Moore's industry? Law. What, yeah, uh, tell, tell Moore's years. Law. Whatever. Moore's Law is um, it, the that, speed. Yeah, well, the you, speed in which yeah. technology advances. Oh. Speed of processors will double every yeah. year and a half. But the right. but the but in general the the speed of technology there's a there's and I don't know what the uh, numbers are but the speed of technology is like a snowball effect. It started I he out. For, I thought he worked Intel. for Intel. Intel. And more. Yeah, and and it had to do with processors uh, doubling every year. I and think a half. it had to do with processors, Rob. Yeah. Well, they're at the but, point but, now. They're at the point now where they can't really do anything until they get off of the copper. Right. The next thing is going to be photonics. Yeah, because, because they've heat, gone big with the wafers and everything else. Yeah. yeah. Heat's gotten to be a problem, and so really to get to the kind of processing that we're going to need in the next twenty years, it's going to be about switching to photonics. <laughs> and what are photonics exactly? So it's light. It's uh, it, it's it's light. It's fiber. It's uh, changing the way computers work. HPE right now is doing, a, my company is doing some really, really bra- groundbreaking things, what we call the machine. It's the next generation of computers, and it's called, it, and the backbone of it is called photonics. So instead of having these buses on your computer where you've yeah. got processors that are tied to memory via this copper, yeah. it's all going to be, at some point, it's going to be like, like racks of CPU and racks of memory that are tied together via photonics so that you, you're not tied down to right now what the copper piece that, that's, that is really the, the – right now that's the, the thing that's killing ta- technology. Well, from getting going in and out of, of, say, your processors, you go to copper, right? Right now, yeah, everything yeah. is copper, right? Yeah. And that w- when that's gone and we've switched to photonics – Now the chips that's themselves, the-, the chips themselves aren't copper. No, no, no. The chips yeah. are actually silicon, right? right? Yeah. Copper is what makes all the connections on the circuit boards. So what you want to do is the, instead and of gold. using copper, use, to, use they're, light. They're going, right, using yeah. light, using photonics. That's the next big thing. And, and I would imagine that all machines would run probably without any heat, right? Be a lot less heat generated, correct? Yeah, because, I mean, uh, most computers, even to this day, I mean, laptops, people always complain about laptops that they're so damn right. hot on the bottom. I mean, yeah. you can't really put them on your lap, you know, without computers. Breaking. The way we know computers in the next ten or fifteen years is going to change dramatically, and it's going to start with the big machines for the data centers and all that. It'll yeah. eventually work its way down into personal computers. Although you get to a point where how fast do you need a personal computer to be? What was that? Train. Dude, that was a train. Thank you. Well, is that <laughs> coming from you, Steve? Yeah, the trucks run right behind. It's one why, of the why reasons is I've it, the Why is it? You, you are the <laughs> noisiest person we have on this show. There is more noise. There's always traffic or trains going through your bedroom and whatever. You know, <laughs> they don't usually, go through my bedroom. <laughs> usually deaf people buy, get an apartment near noisy trains. Right. Blind people usually go for places that have a lot of light shining in the window. I, 
You know? Yeah, no, I, I, I got that delight, but you know, I, 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 I got what I could afford. Yeah. And it needs a lot of help, and I need a lot of help, and uh, I'm not. Amen. Amen. Yep. <laughs> Who said that? Jason. Jason. That Jason. Jason. It was Damien. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, Damien isn't on here, is he? No, no Jason Damien. is Damien. Yeah, so it's, it's oh. Damien's birthday week, right? It's Damien's birthday week. So he took the whole week off because it's his birthday. So. Uh, what was, what's the, 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 I'm going to take a day there. off in. Uh, I'm going to take a day off. I think in October or is it early November? Because we're going to see this play that uh, Gina Gershon is in. Have you heard about this? The thing about the Trumps, and she plays a, Ivanka, Oh my God! She wow. plays Ivanka, and does it perfectly. No. Does it absolutely oh. spot on? <laughs> perfect. This could be really good. Yeah. What's That's his name? great. I think it's called something like the Trump TV special or something like that. And it's I thought you were going to be taking off like a week, Alex, and going to I, up I, to Vermont and yeah, all that. Well, that was canceled. Oh. Because my wife's business has to move, and she is part of the move. So, so why don't you still just take off that week and go back to San Francisco? I don't know. I got to take a week soon. But if I go, you if should, I take man. a week and then I go somewhere without her, you know. That, mm-hmm. That'd be perfect. Go to San Francisco, help out uh, Bubs, you know, give him a little internet, yeah. something going on, yeah. and, you know, just check out your old shit, man. You want to get rid of me, right, Jason? Is that it? No. That I, it? I, you, Come you down have this way. Stories. you got a place to stay. We'll go to Monterey. You'll there have you stories go. to tell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, you know, I, uh, it's not a bad idea, actually. I, I would love to see you, like, go walk around. I would go, old, oh, I would go like for no other reason video than, and shit. than, no other reason than to see Phil, you know, and, mm-hmm. and Kevin. Yeah, we come all, on down. We could all get together for lunch. Who's paying? Uh, <laughs> I'll pay, we'll go to Monterey. Phil or Alex, because they're both Jews. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, Jason. I guess I'm so- I guess I'm stuck. Watch right? it. Watch yeah. it. Why? You know, I never could figure it out. Why is it the Jews were always referred to as cheap, but the Scotch were thrifty? What's the difference? We know. Yeah. They they wear skirts. Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. We know I don't know. Thrifty. I guess thrifty sounds nicer. Yeah. It's the person who told the story. <laughs> the Irish are just anyway. Yeah. You know. You yeah. know. The, the one the one anything. guy in this group we haven't talked. <laughs> We haven't really talked at all about politics tonight. The one guy here who is just sick and tired of politics is Rob, right, Rob? Yep. And I think I'm really with you now, and I'll tell you why. I'm watching MSNBC today, and for the whole— Hold on a second. And then I turned over to CNN, and I turned over to Fox, and every— fucking story for every minute of the hour was about Trump. Even on Fox? Uh, even yep. on Fox. Although they, I so think they were they, covering all of the stuff that was been going on this te- past they week? They tended to go with others. Oh, it wasn't they, about John McCain. Uh, let me finish. Well, oh, they mentioned him briefly. Yeah. But, but they, yeah, they, they, oh, that, that, so happened, that happened after I started watching this. And they would, they like, start at the beginning of the hour with a Trump story, and they go from one Trump story to another Trump story to another Trump story, bashing him all the way, you know, to the point where I'm going, I'm not feeling it's sorry all- for Trump, but this is going overboard. You know, I agree, there, with, there you. Are, there I agree other- with you. I will, I will, here's a, a rep, uh, something that just came to me while I was listening to CNN last week with all the stuff that was going on, right? Mm-hmm. I was listening to one of the pundits who said, you know, I don't even know that it matters anymore what Trump does. You know, there were, there have been times when I thought that this was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back and nothing happens. And I stopped and thought about that for a moment. And I thought the reason why that is is because the people who are listening to you, you're preaching to the choir. It's yep. the other side. is in, So back in the day of Watergate, we heard news 
from 6 to 6.30 at night on three networks. And we all basically got the same news. So what you heard, you went, ooh, hmm, Richard Nixon, really all this is going on, and this one's a, this one is an informant, and this one is this. And today, you get two completely different sides of the story, and people like Phil don't believe what they hear on CNN or MSNBC, and the people like me don't believe what they hear on Fox. So it doesn't matter yeah. what you but report. You, but you know what? You know what's still, uh, if you watch the 630 News, they still have a variety of stories. It's not like the whole newscast is nothing but Trump that's stuff. That's still the same, yeah. Yeah, that they have maintained. Yeah, that certain, really hasn't changed. They, but nobody yeah, watches I, that like like they used to. That was the right. only place to get. The only people who watch it are old people. That's why nothing but drug companies advertising on. <laughs> I, yep. I believe yep. what's happening today is that this is a civil war, but instead of fighting it with muskets, they're using news information, disinformation, uh, a, a selective news stories and this is the way it's being fought from both sides i think and i really I think you're believe wrong. this it's, is a civil it's war a civil and it's war. here to it's divide not, us it's not a civil war uh, rob then jeff then no, jason no, Je uh, uh, the, you I, have spoken uh, i didn't have my hand up first uh, jason, jason had his okay, hand up jason, for me jason then i was just then. i was just curious is this a fake news thing or is this true about the white house was shut down because a tv was thrown out of a window the other day i think that's I a heard fake that. news story it's probably Who knows fake. if that's true? Who knows? I haven't that? seen it. Yes. Uh, then, then now, uh, Rob. So, so I was listening to the show you. I watched the show you had on the other night with Albert in the studio with yeah. you, and I have to take umbrage with something that Patrick said. <gasps> Ooh, you watch a boy. <laughs> so Patrick, Patrick, <laughs> and and nobody called him out on this. Yeah. Is that and Patrick said that, you know, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. We, we I agreed with him. Hold on, let me let me let me finish. We know my you thought. agreed with him, Phil. You don't have to say that. It's, yeah. Whether there's nothing there or not, nobody knows because Mueller has been as about as professional as you can be and hasn't said a word. So you don't know what he had to say. I don't know what he's found. None of us know. Everybody, I will tell you yeah. that the 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 the. the the uh, you know everybody says there's nothing there with Manafort, right? And there's nothing there with Michael Cohen. Now they're saying that the money that that was paid to these uh, to these uh, porn stars and yeah, those people came out of the same slush fund that this czar from the uh, Soviet, the Russian, uh, what's his name? It, this all came out of this same slush fund, and they've been saying that when when Trump lost all of his money, when was that? Late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. that he got out of that by laundering money for the Russians, okay? So the connection, and again, we don't know, we don't but everybody know. is not willing to let, well, well not everybody, e but e e e right everybody is, is second-guessing what Mueller's going right. to come out with and how well, it's a I, lie and all that. Yeah, I and, did and mention that. I did say that I uh, nobody knows. Nobody because, knows. Because he's doing a good investigation, and right. we won't and know until he's done. Right, and that's he's what I mean. Then, when said, that's there's, when no, that's there's done, nothing there. How does he know? It's None gonna of us be know. either way, he's, then we'll all know. Right. He's charging and, and, people no, as soon no, as he can. Renee? And please them remember and they're that he another 100 subpoenas. And now so he's, the, he's his, his uh, financial guy, uh, the, the Trump... Wald, uh, Waldenstein or something? Yeah. 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 That now they've given him immunity. Yeah. That's going to hurt Trump. Oh, he must he, was, he was mentioned Tucker and the other guy. in that tape. Yeah. Uh, when they were talking yeah. about the corporation. Yeah, yeah. What, I just, uh, Phil, at what point will you think that there might be where there's smoke, there's fire? I'm, I'm, I'm not, look, I don't know the answer, and he may come out of this clean in the end, but at what point it, will you concede that maybe Have there's you heard something? of hell freezing When there over? is something. Okay, okay, yeah, when yeah. there is something. Uh, Jeff, so you're not Jeff, willing well, to listen to the pundits. Jeff's got his no, hand up. absolutely not. Jeff? Yeah, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. When the Congress start to actually sitting down and getting enough information and starting making decisions, then process might happen. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 
In the meantime, and, everybody on the networks is going to be ginning it up all day. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's... It's raining. You know, I'm fed up with MSNBC. I mean, I was just so sick of not hearing anything. Listen, we got to run, and everybody's got their hands up. Yes, quick. Hey, Renee. Jack Bishop is next. Everybody call into his show. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> the name of the show is the first annual Trump family special yeah. off-Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Hey, listen, everybody, it's been wonderful. Phil, I got a little on your case. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, I, I walked away for a minute and cooled down. Uh, okay, good. And uh, well, It's uh, nice that Mommy and Daddy made up. Yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is count to 10. Rob, thank you so much. Jeff, thank you. Steve, thank you. Thank you always. Great As job. always, Jason, we always love having you here. Wish you were here more often. Uh, Kev Ke huh? I said me too. Yeah. Well, Kevin? Thank you, and Renee, thank you as well. Why don't all of you give a big, like, giant wave goodbye so they can see your little shiny faces? That's it. See you, th see you next week, okay? Bye-bye. And if you get a chance, uh, listen to me on, uh, on Sunday or call on Sunday. Uh, I'll be on uh, the, the, the radio on a lot of different stations. You can go to WMAL in... Um, you can go to WMAL in uh, uh, Baltimore, WMAL.com, and you can hear the show. It'll be the Walter Sterling show that I'm doing. And you can call, too. So, whatever. Hey, that's it. I got to run. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the, uh, with the intersection. One o'clock this morning. You got connections. Uh, we'll see you again uh, right after Jason, re uh, Jason, Damien returns on uh, <laughs> I did that the other day with him. On, uh, when he returns on uh, Tuesday, he's here at 9.30. I'm here at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.